Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 34 of Theme Park Workshop. My name is Bella, and I'm joined today by Kelly Hoffman. Hello. And Adam Johnson. Yay. The besties are back together. Holla. And <laughs> This uh, this episode is brought to you by our awesome patrons, Landon Kenoki, Jonathan Edward, Jordan Buster, Greg Harvey, and Joshua Gonzalez. And if you're not a patron already, make sure to join our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash theme park workshop. Support the show and get bonus features, updates, and a ton more. And today... We are going to be talking about pride in theme parks around Orlando and in the state of Florida and representation. And we're also going to be talking about the Last of Us house that's going to be at Horror Nights on both coasts. So, slay. been a very exciting June. Lots of cool things have happened. Yeah. Well, I went to Epcot recently um, and Hollywood Studios at Disney. So I know that they have, I I didn't get to go to Magic Kingdom and see that mural, but I know they had a ton of really cool murals. Um, I posted one of them on the Theme Park Workshop Instagram and there was cool food. Like they had a lunchbox tart that was like guava flavored. I didn't get to try it, but it looked good. What did I have that was pride? Oh gosh, I don't know. I had so many treats that day that I was just overwhelmed, but they had all kinds of really nice like stuff. The merchandise was cuter this year. Like I know they have like the Marvel pride collection. Um, And last year, like, I feel like it was kind of like, like it was just the regular symbols with like rainbow and it was okay, but it wasn't very like cute this year. It was like a lot cuter and I almost bought it, but I had to have self control because I do already have way too many lounge flies but um but the merch was cute this year there were a lot of cool shirts and stuff so yeah I feel like you know I'm sure we'll get into this but a a lot of the parks could stand to do more especially in in months other than June um but there was some cool representation um and it's nice to see like in the month of June especially um this happens but a lot of queer people in the parks or allies or at least people that are like dressed up you know, for pride and are wearing their, I like I was wearing a rainbow Mickey shirt and a rainbow Mickey like bucket hat. Um, one of them I think was from Target. The The hat was from a small shop and I don't remember which one. Um, but like, I just love seeing all the people in their rainbow stuff and, and, you know, queer couples and just, it's really cool to see all of that in theme park spaces. So I like that they do have these things, even if they could stand to do more, because it makes people feel comfortable with who they are and and feel safe like showing off who they are at least to a certain extent so it was really nice yeah for sure I know um I was at Magic Kingdom in Hollywood Studios this weekend and I totally forgot to go find the murals um I just forgot um but I know that this year they put the Epcot one what is it right next to Connections yeah it's right next and last year yeah and last year it was like back by the figment bathroom which no one really goes to because it's way in the back but it was nice to see that they moved it more front and center this year being a little bit more open um especially with you know all the stuff from that man that runs florida and disney (laughs) their little thing so it's been nice seeing them be more open about pride and representation in the parks but I definitely agree with you Kelly I feel like they could do more more year round not just like because you know how like companies um and it's called like what did people say rainbow washing during the month of June um and it's like Mm -hmm. only for the month of June because it doesn't like you should be celebrating pride every day every day every month every year like it's not just a thing in June you know what I mean yeah I feel like yeah go Go ahead Kelly um I feel like Disney in particular does a lot of that um I oh and I didn't even mention I didn't get to go to Magic Kingdom but the trans pride cake pops were adorable I love that they did that um they just had the trans pride flag on the bay they were so cute um but yeah I mean I feel like Disney does that a lot too where they don't usually have a ton of stuff outside of like June 
Um, Universal, at least I appreciate that they have their Pride March available all year long. Um, and it is like you can find it anywhere. But I mean, there's I wish there was more representation, though. There's definitely a lot of rainbow washing and like, I don't know, especially with like the stuff going on at Target, like they have such a tiny pride collection. And I know that it's going to be gone, you know, July 1st. So um, I went into my my Target and I was so disappointed by that because there were so many cool shirts online and stuff like that. And then they were just like gone. So there's definitely, you know, it's really fun in June seeing all this stuff. And I know that rainbow capitalism is very controversial, but I do still have fun seeing it and buying things and stuff like that. Um, But I wish that it was more year round because I would still enjoy it every other day of the year because uh, my identity and the identity of other people in the community does not change um, after June 30th. So yeah, um, but I, I will say I do, I forgot that last year the Pride mural was right behind Figment. I didn't even get a picture with it because I didn't even see it. This year, especially if you're walking um, towards the Connection Cafe instead of away from it, like when you enter the park, you may pass it, although you won't because there's usually a line of people, which was exciting. There was like a photo pass person there. So if you have photo pass or you buy it for the day, like that's pretty cool. Um, but it wasn't too bad of a line or anything, but you definitely see it when you're exiting the park if you're on the right side so it was in a really prominent place and it was big um the one in Hollywood Studios I feel like was even more prominent because it's right in front of like the Muppets area on that wall um and it's so you'll see it regardless of your direction as long as you're walking in that area so yeah it was uh it was cool to see that and I know that the Tomorrowland one um that one looked pretty big and and awesome too yeah um I don't remember if it's Disney or Universal but um I know they were donating most if not all of the profits made on their pride march to Trevor Project I believe or it was one of the local Orlando ones I might be getting years mixed up I can't remember if it was Trevor Project and I can't remember the percentage either I know yeah. Bob Chapek's big snafu that you know we're still really feeling the repercussions of as as theme park fans Florida people and all of that they did really come out strong with a lot of pride merch and mm-hmm. then they that was definitely 100 percent was going to the artists um, yeah. at least um and i know i've seen signs at universal and at disney like saying proceeds will go to such mm-hmm. and such charity i just can't remember what charity it is i don't think it was trevor project but it was oh kelly i think you know so this article is from 2022 um i couldn't find up front what it was for this year i know last year disney donated 100 percent of mm-hmm, or they that's said 100 percent of. of their merchandise profits for the pride collection and they just said to support um lgbtqia plus youth and families and then apparently the profits were split between like a bunch of them like mm, awesome. um, glsen p flag the trevor projects zebra coalition so there were a bunch of them but they were um local to some of them were national but some of them were local to orlando and then there was also one that was located local to uh, Los Angeles County and San Francisco areas so they have like a bunch of them they donated to I don't know I don't none of these articles are from 2023 I do think that they said there was donating of profits but I don't know what the percentage was or anything like that. I remember there definitely was one for Universal that came out recently yeah Um, because while Disney's had all the headlines it is because they weren't in support or I won't say they weren't in support, but it was bad PR from Bob Chapek, essentially. We're like, we're not going to make Disney political. We're not going to get into these conversations. And it's like, but that's your fifth key. <laughs> this is your fifth key. Exactly. Fifth. Um, so then they doubled down and that's when Governor DeSantis got, Governor DeSantis, Universal has been noticeably silent when it comes to speaking out against the legislation and stuff. But I think they've also made actionable strides i think um as far as representation goes like we talked about a number of times like the new uh latin dance show that they have has same-sex dancers horror nights has a history of queerness from like vanity fair or sorry vanity ball <laughs> yeah, not the magazine <laughs> the, the scary zone vanity ball to some of the properties that are represented i we're going to get into that later um that that are represented there are very queer properties and whatnot but 
their profits do go towards supporting politicians that are in opposition. They also go to politicians who are in favor, um, which is the complicated thing of theme park, uh, not theme park, uh, corporate politics and, and all of that jazz. But I think there have been some ways that they've been doing it. But yeah, people pointed it out because it's like, okay, well, this is true. This is a good step, but you're still not speaking out. The whole point of that was, yeah, totally saw that thing about the profits. Um, but when it comes to the actual representation, like it is, I, I think you, uh, diversity is good in all the ways. And I think the theme parks need to do more like, where are the women when it comes to like, who are our leads in the rides? Like that's the reason that um, uh, Kate and Kong, I think stands out so much to me because she's your main character, your main guide. It's not a gender neutral character like it is in um, the shows um, or for the skippers um, on all these spieling attractions. Uh, it's like, oh, a woman's leading the ride. That's pretty cool. Um, where are characters of color who are are leading the the charge and all these attractions? Um, or you know, was this like I think I think I've heard that in the Back to the Future escape room, one of the characters is non-binary or goes by they or something like that. But it's also widely considered the worst of the two escape rooms at Universal. It's like, oh come on, you're so close, fellas, <laughs> and stuff like that. But I think it's just like matter not just a matter, I use my words more carefully, but it is a matter of like representing well and representing all sorts of, of people groups and peoples and minorities um, well in the parks. And that's something I think a lot of, I think we agree, like you could do better and not just headcanon things. I had a whole thing on an earlier show in Fanta uh, Fantasia, Fantasmic came back about how that show is very queer coded in its messages and the kind of things that we saw as it was going on. Like it's not, you know, Mickey's not coming out with the rainbow flag, you know, the way he is on the merch, which that's a whole another conversation. But again, that back to back, of, I think, was it, uh, Bella, you're the stand, correct me if I'm wrong. It's like out there and show yourself and proud. Of, out or, there is not in it, but it's proud of your boy, show yourself, how far reflection. I'll go, reflection. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not reflection. You're right. You're right. That's harmonious. That's You're also right. where Out There is from. It's uh, Mega Man. Yeah. Out There was also in Happily Ever After. Out There is also in Happily Ever After. Either. That's right. That's right. I'm getting, I'm getting my like, confused. It's my favorite. But well, like, we're here. Think... Bring back Harmonious. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Harmonious is great. And I only saw it once in full, anyway, like where I was actually watching it. But Kelly, oh my God. I know. I loved it. It was amazing. But I just, I'm. <sighs> I've started at Epcot so much lately because of um, all the stuff with the boarding groups. Like I'm, I'm not going to go to Ep like Epcot and not go on Cosmic Rewind. That's insanity. So mm -hmm. yeah, I haven't ended there enough, but I did love it the one time I went. Uh, but the point I was trying to make with Fantasmic and all of that is like a lot of, I think like most queer representation at the parks, as far as like the experiences, obviously there's a ton of, 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 of queer cast members and team members and employees and merchandise. Um, but like those employees, they represent the people who are experiencing the park from all walks of life and all over. Um, and again, when it comes to like the events, it's, it's pretty isolated to what can we sell you? What, what candies and what treats <laughs> can we sell you? and stuff um and i think not having oh i need a queer reading of an attraction to see a queerness in the, this attraction i think that would be good whether it is you know being comfortable with two same gendered couples or having a trans lead in an attraction will it be um uh what do you call it um divisive for some people probably but sir henry's haunted trail does it without question they don't advertise it but there is great queer representation in those trails and it just so happens it's the only <laughs> christian event that we're talking about as well or that i know of anyway you know and they do it effortlessly and it's like oh yeah of course why isn't this character talking about their uh, or his husband um or what 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 not like it, it it just works it 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 feels right you know it's it's effortless and of course, they need to do it across the board. Like, I, I feel like some people might be listening to it. Like, why is Think Park Workshop just talking about pride and talking about queerness and LGBTQ? Um, maybe we should do more talking about all sorts of, of, of groups and how they're represented and how they should be represented and 
um, uh, figures who are important um, that are of different minorities, that maybe that is something we can do. But I think, you know, it's Pride Month and we want to talk about it. And um, they're very much under <laughs> fire, um, unfairly so, you know. So I think that's at least when I pitched this idea, like that was kind of my thought process behind it. it wasn't trying to be trendy or anything. No. Yeah. Um. What I like, it, like the first thing that popped into my mind when we were talking about, um, <laughs> when we were talking about um, pride um, and representation in Disney is the whole thing that happened over in Disneyland at Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique with Nick. Um and how yeah. they were just like dragged all over social media which was so sad to see um because it shouldn't matter like just let a person do their 100%, job right? like just because that they were wear like any cast member can wear the girl costume air quotes or the boy costume air quotes yeah um they can wear whichever one so for representation like whatever they want to wear like why not so why is it when a person is wearing a different costume like why is it a problem they're just they're they're making little kids happy like i'm looking at the videos right now they're making little kids happy by making them into princes or princesses why is this a big issue it's just it broke my heart and it makes me think of dylan mulvaney because mm-hmm. I met Dylan in New York and she's literally the kindest person ever. And, you know, she's been dragged across the face of the universe and it's just, it's not fair. And I just don't understand. And especially with the political climate we live in now, especially in Florida, um, I'm just nervous for what's going to happen. And it's just, I don't even really have the right words for it. Cause I don't want to, you know, like speak over anyone. Um, it's just really, really frustrating and upsetting to watch, you know. Um, I was excited to see that yesterday, at least in good pride news, and this doesn't really have to do with the theme parks, although I would love for something like this to be in the theme parks. Um, but the the ban on drag shows in Florida was blocked by a judge. I which saw is very good news. I mean, it's not perfect like there's still a lot of things that need to change um uh, you know that's going on right now Florida is people are very upset with Florida including people who live here and the queer people who live here um but you know that's exciting news um would love to see a drag show at a theme park but um there's a lot of things that need to change and I think that do you have, wait hold on do you know something what yes what i loved about hollow scream last year at sea world is they had yes. the drag show and i would love to see more of that not only at haunt events you're but right. just in, imagine like like why does disneyland get pride night and we don't like imagine a like a drag show at disneyland or disney world i would love that i need that well that's <sighs> why i'm hopeful that things will improve um, when I see news like that. Now, obviously, there's a lot of other things that are really awful that are going on. But, you know, I feel like we need more of these queer entertainers. And it just I just want Florida to feel like a safer space for queer people because, like, we're not going anywhere. You know, I know a lot of people want to say oh get rid of Florida from the U.S. you know like oh queer people should leave Florida but that's not possible for everyone and it's not something that everyone wants to do. Um, We are very fortunate as hosts to live in very blue areas of Florida um, where there are you know I just went to St. Pete Pride yesterday which is pretty close to my home Um, and so I live in communities that are full of amazing wonderful queer people and we're all around Florida but some places feel safer than others. So I hope that Florida continues to feel safe. And I think part of that comes from these bigger entertainment companies and places that people are going to visit and locals are going to visit, like where they can feel safe there and feel like they can be themselves because seeing these people, you know, walking around, like I said, like in their pride stuff, seeing people, obviously California is very different from Florida, but seeing them at pride night and and people traveling to visit pride night. And it just 
it just looks like the best time and I know that a lot of it is like performative but if it makes people happy and makes them feel safe I think it is doing good exactly and this is why it is so important to vote and register to vote in your midterm your primaries especially with this presidential election cycle coming up so please every theme park workshop listener please go register to vote if you haven't already um to make sure we can make florida safer and not let hate and evil take over this country and the state Mm -hmm. breach and uh yeah um we talk about like representation is good and I, i hope on this show you know you and i think it's not even just isolated this episode that we are it's a queer friendly show and we always have been um since you know 2019 um uh i want my dream is that someone watches or hears the show and like we don't have much of a community (laughs) you know we're a very small group but like the folks who are there or you just stumble on this episode i think 200 people listened to our mermaid episode 2000 people watched our silly galaxy's edge mr rogers thing maybe you stumble back on and and whatnot but like i hope that when you listen to if you listen to this um you know you feel seen you know at least three people in a community accepts you and and thinks that the world is absolutely a better place with you in it um i just got a message from someone the other day and because they knew something that i was in before and they kind of connected the dots um and and just saw some support i had been been posting it really made them feel seen and loved and special complete stranger don't know them but just seeing their story i'm like that's what it is and um that's why we're talking about like representation is great and i know personally like i could probably name you 40 people that i know and have known in my life that have made an impact on me who are uh queer bi trans exactly yes (laughs) kelly (laughs) um and i mean i'm not going to name everybody that i know because i don't know how you know out and about they want to be but like i know someone who had a big impact on my life this isn't theme parks but it's the reason i'm here um even on a show you know public speaking and all that it's jared o'rourke he's not involved with theme parks at all but he is probably the most he believed in me when i was 11 years old in theater um in ways that like i'm not saying like nobody believed in me but jared o'rourke looked out for me but he just believed in me in a really actual way and opened up opportunities for me and and theater and he just also happens to be gay and he's very gay i didn't notice that when i was 11 12 years old but it didn't matter you know it didn't matter he was the uh, the greatest director and i can't imagine a world without him in it i can't imagine some of my oldest friends who are trans a world without them in it and we're going to get into this in a second, but there, I hope when we highlight these uh, next three uh, creators coming up that are from the parks and themed entertainment space, like these people are queer and they created some of your favorite things. Um, and like, can you imagine a world without them in it for being who they are? And they've got great stories, but uh, Belly, you wanted to say something and I want to make sure you're heard. Like what you were saying about like growing up around LGBTQ plus um, communities and people like I grew up going to the theater with my Mimi, going to her rehearsals, going to her auditions, going to all of her shows. And so I grew I grew up um, around um, LGBTQ um, people. So I just I just don't understand how like they're just people. I don't understand how people can hate just because of someone. This is it's this sounds like such like a juvenile thing to say. But, like, I just literally cannot wrap my mind around the fact that, like, there are people that actually feel hatred towards, like, people loving someone of the same sex or gender. I just, I don't get it. I've never been able to wrap my mind around it. I never will be able to wrap my mind around it. It's just just so heartbreaking. If you enjoy art of any form... It doesn't matter if it's television, um, theme parks, haunts, books, like you have loved something that a queer creator made, whether you know it or not, whether they're out or not, somebody queer made something that you love. And if you have a problem with that, then I just don't understand you because, um, you know, like horror has such a, um, uh, 
background with with queer stuff and and there's so many queer animators it's just and I actually was at pride yesterday and there was a sign um the person in front of me had this sign and everybody like wanted to stop and get pictures with it that was walking in the parade but it said gay is like glitter it's never going away because people have been gay from the beginning of time it's just they've been around people have been queer um trans people have existed for so long and i hope that the world continues to go in a way where they feel more and more safe to come out but this is not new and it's not things that are happening you know because of the social climate that we're in being more accepting it's just that these people may feel safer to be out there and also we're in such a digital world that we see it more you know um versus before where we maybe didn't you know you didn't you couldn't just like go on TikTok in the 60s you know like you know the, there were queer people but maybe they weren't just like as as open because it wasn't as accepted and it also wasn't in a technology climate where you could see that all the time so I promise you that you've experienced queer art I'm sure if you're listening to this and especially if you've gotten this far in this episode that you are like well yeah of course and I love that and we love that for you but yeah, I uh, I will also never understand those people. Um, I didn't kind of realize that I was queer until later in life, but it is something that I have realized has influenced my whole life, you know, at least from like when I've been an adult and everything like that. And, and, uh, and it's, you know, I've had a lot of queer influence, but I'm queer because I and like as Lady Gaga said I was born this way um but it's not from any outside influence or anything it's just this is who I am and it just took me a while to realize it but um yeah and it, I think it's important to to support people and to support creators and just I don't know I'm I could ramble about this forever but my point is that like art is so queer and so much of it and that makes me really happy and I, I want to continue to see that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, I think that's such a powerful point, Kelly, um, because it, queer representation, queer art, out artists, any of that, they're not going to make straight people gay or queer, any of that. It's just going to make those who are queer feel safe and having open spaces like this is going to make people feel safe. That's the point of it and believing in the dignity of all people. Like I try to make empathy and believing in the dignity of all people like central to how I see the world, which is, I, I sometimes it doesn't work out, but <laughs> because some people can be really annoying, but I'm like, no, that's another person that, and I'm trying to understand how they get to where they are or how do they feel, you know, do they feel hurt? Do they feel lost? Do they feel found? Like, you know, like, I think those are two of the most important things one can do is believe in people's dignity and believe in the power of empathy and understanding people and just love, you know? Um, this isn't about theme parks again, but both of what you guys said just got me thinking about it. Um, the Tony Awards were two weeks ago and <laughs> and <laughs> um, Kelly just did the limp wrist. Um, so, like Adam sorry, is kicking. Really quick. Somebody had a shirt on um, the other day. That Adam and I were trying to tell Bella it was okay that she could talk about anything that wasn't theme park related, and I accidentally did the thing. <laughs> um, and but someone had a shirt yesterday at Pride that was like, "Are you?" and it had the wrist thing on it, and I was Period. like, "Wow, I need that." Anyway, I love that. Continue your point, please. <laughs> um, but what I was saying, like the Tony Awards were just a couple weeks ago, and. Um, the one speech, you know, that always rings in my mind is the Lin-Manuel Miranda one right after Pulse. But the one that really got me this time was Michael Arden's speech for um, when he won for Parade. Um, it's just a really powerful speech. I recommend everyone go watch it. Um, very much talking about, you know, being um, gay and in theater and having insults thrown at you your entire life. And now you're on a big stage and you are winning a Tony Award improving every single person that came against you wrong um so i highly highly also speaking of how great the tony awards were it was so awesome seeing two non-binary performers win awards and tony's it was great it was i oh, love that so much alex newell and g or j harrison g i think that's their name i don't want to get it wrong you all know who i'm talking about 
Um, but I think it's just, as Liza said, it's about damn time. And I hope things slowly trickle down and in like, I feel like slowly trickle down and just make everything better. And maybe awesome things will, awesome things and awesome representation will come into the park soon. So we're talking about re representation of the parks um, and we were talking about how um, art is, is so queer and, and all of that. I thought it would be, or we thought it would be a great idea rather that it, um, to highlight some important LGBTQ plus creators at the parks uh, behind a lot of the attractions and not even just the attractions, just behind a lot of the things that we love at the parks. Um, this is obviously not an exhaustive list. So like if you know someone that means a lot to you who's in the theme park space and is queer, um, Highlight, highlight them in the comments below so we can all celebrate them or, or tweet that us. I don't know any of that. Um, but we're going to highlight three. Um, you might have heard of them. They're relatively well known. Um, the first one, uh, Bob Gurr, Disney legend and former Imagineer. Uh, if you've seen the Imagineering story, uh, episode one, uh, he's the guy who signs the Matterhorn um, because he never got to do it back in the day. And so, and he throws the basketball or he does basketball and the Matterhorn and all of that. That's how I first heard about Bob Gurr, but he's been around a long time. He was a man in Walt Disney's inner circle. He's actually written at length what it was like in written memoirs about what it was like being a gay man um, behind some of the most important foundations of Disneyland um, and beyond. Um, and being in Walt Disney's inner circle and all that, like he's been around a long, long time. Um, he's said to have designed most, uh, if not all, of the ride vehicles at the Disneyland attractions when the parks opened. Some notable ones were um, Autopia, uh, the Haunted Mansion Doom Buggies, the Monorail, Submarine Voyage, um, and as we mentioned earlier, the Matterhorn and the Bobsleds. The Bobsleds. <laughs> Uh, and I also read up on this is that uh, he worked on the Main Street USA vehicles and the 1964 President Lincoln animatronic that was at the World's Fair. So great moments with Mr. Lincoln can thank Bob Gurr. Thanks to progress. Thanks to Bob Gurr. And I was reading on uh, Wikipedia. It was it was cited. I couldn't find the, the actual thing, but if it's actually true, I think this is really fun. He gave himself the title of Director of Special Vehicle Development because he was the only one working on it <laughs> at the time when Disney World was around. Or sorry, Disneyland. Um, but he went in. The, yeah. Hey, you know, if no one else is giving you the title, might as well take it for yourself, I say. But he went independent in 1981, as a lot of these creators do. Um, and he started creating spectacles uh, for the Jackson 5, the 1984 Olympics. Uh, he worked on the original uh, Universal Studios Hollywood studio tour King Kong animatronic, the one with the cat whiskers, uh, thanks to Bob Gurr. Uh, and I thought this was really cool. Like, I think with Jurassic Park, we think a lot about Stan Winston and Phil Tippett. Um, if, if we, you know, know about those, uh, guys, but he consulted as well on the animatronics, um, on Jurassic Park, as well as the 1998 Godzilla. Um, if you're a fan or if you're familiar with those movies, of course, we love Jurassic Park up in this podcast, but if you want more information about Bob Gurr, uh, you can check out his memoir, Bob Gurr, Legendary Imagineer, Life and Times, Disney and Beyond. Uh, if I find a link, I'll put that in the show notes because that I'm interested in checking that out. Um, because he has lived a long life and a very uh, experienced life, uh, but it's just wild, like, just all the things he's been involved in. Like, that's more than most people. Like, I feel like more than even Marty Sklar, who's like, he wrote Mickey's Ten Commandments, and here's Bob Gurr, like, I gave myself a title because I did everything. Um, and uh, somehow I didn't sign the Matterhorn until 2017. <laughs> and especially because, like, he worked closely with Walt. Yeah. Like, that's just so cool. He's so cool. I love Absolutely. Bob Gurr. He's just a cute little old man. I love when he goes and rides the carousel whenever he's like in the parks. It just, it makes me so happy to see him having the time of his life on the carousel. I love it. <laughs> We're even seeing him dancing. There were videos of him dancing at like, um, like a, a pride night or something like that. And I was like, it's Bob, it's Bob Gurr guys. I'm pretty sure that's what was in that video. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, ever since I've seen about him, I've heard nothing but just the most wonderful things about him. And he's been talking about, um, you know, being queer, working for old school Disneyland and all that, at, you know, well, for decades. But like, you, if you look up Bob Gurr, LGBT, Bob Gurr gay, Bob Gurr Disney, like there are things on Attractions Magazine dating back to 2014, you know, about this. So, I mean, it's really cool that you're a Disney legend. This is who you are and you're responsible for so much, um, you know. It's great stuff. It's great stuff. Um, another guy I want to highlight is Dave Cobb. If you don't know who Dave Cobb is, he's been around the game of theme park design. Um, I think most people will probably recognize his work as the creative director for Universal Orlando Resorts, uh, Men in Black Alien Attack. Um, such a great ride. Such a great ride. And Dave Cobb is a lot of the reason why. Uh, and I know some people who listen to this podcast um, remember the Star Trek The Experience um, in Vegas. Uh, he was the show writer. My dad has seen that many times and he loved it so much. That is, my dad is a big Trekkie, absolutely loved that. And when he was describing it the other day, his like eyes were lighting up and he was so like, so nostalgic and loved it so much. So I'm sad that I never got to see that, but that is so cool and I'll have to share that with him. Was that like, cause there was one on iDrive that my dad worked on. Um, is that like kind of the same thing, like a walkthrough thing? They have like that like big chair. I've never seen Star Trek. Is it like a show or is it like a walkthrough like exhibit thing? I believe it's like a walkthrough experience. So like, remember in Poseidon's yeah. Fury where the whole thing like disappears uh, in that oh. last room? They had that as part of it. That's what a lot of people talk about. Wow. Um, so like they beamed you up and whatnot. Um, actually, friend of the show, uh, Chandler Day Roche. Um, if you go to his uh, podcast without a cool acronym channel, uh, somewhere deep in the archives is a whole video about Star Trek The Experience. So that's one place to check it out. Um, I think Ex Exhibition Theme Park um, has, has done a thing on it. Yeah, very much a cult, uh, cult classic because it's no longer here. It didn't last very long, uh, probably because of where it was. Um, you know, things in Vegas come and go, especially at, at that scale. But yeah, Dave was the show writer of it. Um, afterwards, he became the senior creative director for Paramount Park. So if you don't remember what Paramount Parks was, um, it was the subsidiary, a subsidiary of Paramount uh, that had Cedar, the Cedar Parks, Carowinds, Love Carowinds, and, and a bunch more. Um, it eventually folded into Cedar Fair uh, in 2007. And after that, he became the park-wide creative director of Warner Brothers World Abu Dhabi, which is one of the largest indoor theme parks in the world. Um, so he's been around. Currently, he's the VP of Creative Development at Animal Repair Shop, which works on a ton of unique themed experiences. Um, one thing that's uh, one of the things that they've worked on that um, I saw on their website was an AR-centric board game based around Arkham Asylum, uh, like Batman. Um, but more than that, well, not more than that, I'm not saying that's like a low accomplishment that came out wrong, but he was recognized by Blue Loop. And if you don't know who Blue Loop is, they're like the industry, I don't want to say standard, but like they're like the industry publication um, for themed entertainment, not just theme parks, but you know, when it comes to like museums, um, how they create those experiences or how you theme or brand um, malls and, and shops and stores and displays. Um, for the theme park influencers, uh, one year he was recognized as one of the top 50 theme park influencers by Blue Loop. Um, if you want more about his work, um, and he's actually very active in the community as well, um, Orlando Park Stop, which um, go there for all your great theme park rumors. At least Stella does a great job over there, but Dave Cobb uh, comes onto the show every now and again still. He's active in the Twitter community. Um, he was just on their Dungeons and Drag Queens um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, charity uh, event. Um, so he's very active in the community, but if you want to know more about his professional work, uh, check out his YouTube channel. I'll have a link in the, the comments below. I think if you look up Dave Cobb, he'll, he'll come up on there. But he's got like old segments of him on the Travel Channel um, and like many documentaries. I think he's got like MIB Alien Attack at home and, and you know, things like that. Um, so if you want to know more about Dave, um, he's gay and uh, he's open about that. And he talks about um, some of that experience on his Twitter account, because that's who he is. Um, that's as much a part of who he is as his creative passions that brought us great attractions like Men in Black and um, Warner Brothers World and of course, Star Trek The Experience. Um, yeah, go check out Dave. And the last one I uh, wanted to feature was Emery Alvarado. She's a former scenic painter, openly trans uh, trans woman. You might know her best as, uh, for her, her work over at Universal Orlando. 
Um, for, for a while there, she was a, a scenic painter and she was best known for creating the pumpkin that would become known as Lil Boo. Lil Boo. Slay, slay. <laughs> uh, Lil Boo the baby. became a meme in HHN 30 because we all recognized him and uh, uh, the a wicked growth just because he had such a unique face and he was at eye level. It's like, hey, that's a fun little pumpkin. It became a, a meme and highly recognized. They had to move Lil Boo so no one would take Lil Boo because Lil Boo became a treasure as he should be. Um, and then last uh, Halloween Horror Nights, he became a key piece of iconic, iconic iconography. <laughs> he became a key piece of iconography uh, in 31. He was the host of the Lost Continent All Hallows Eve shop. Um, he was also in the uh, short-lived ghoulish Halloween tale. A uh, little jump scare at the end it was Little Boo. Um, but yeah, Emery uh, designed Little Boo, and he first showed up, uh, uh, Little Boo did during Trick or Treat. Um, she was just designing pumpkins, and then this came out. Since then, she's an independent artist um, and has fought for individual artist recognition when it comes to attractions credit, because most of the time you might hear of a few names like Dave and Bob and Terry Koo and Mark Woodbury and some of the folks over on like Velocicoaster, like you find them pretty easy. Uh, Shelby Hone, um, for example. But the smaller artists who would do things like scenic and do things like design, you might hear about them, you know, years down the road. And it's a very small segment, um, you know. So she's been fighting for that. And I believe uh, Dave Cobb was also champion as well when they were uh, um, on, on Twitter together. But I, I just think that's cool. And she's done a number of podcasts talking about her experience with Horror Nights and experience with horror and her... Um, her heritage and her artistry and her transness. And I just always find it fascinating to listen to. Um, so make sure you look her up, support her art. Um, she does very detailed art. Um, it's on the more expensive side, but if you want to support an artist and get something great in your home, um, yeah, definitely check out Emery's uh, Twitter um, over at Emery Arts. I get a grin again. <laughs> Film is a weapon. They're coming for you, Barbara. I will keep these lights up until the day I die. I think there's a chance that Will's still out there. The caretaker is So we kind of teased um, at the beginning of the episode that we were going to talk about how there are more queer IPs and queer properties coming to the theme parks, particularly Halloween Horror Nights. Um, and it's very exciting that we have um, one that was officially announced. And it's The Last of Us, which if you're not super familiar, um, is a queer property, which is really exciting. Um, if you've seen the show, you know that, although this is based on the video game. Um, but there's even more in the video game, which I'm sure will be in season two, because it seems like the show, I have not played the game. I've seen some clips of it, um, but a lot of stuff was very true to the show and, and the show is great as well. Um, but it's really exciting that there's going to be a queer property at Halloween Horror Nights. And it's also um, a property that is going to be really cool and spooky, I believe. Yeah, I'm it's gonna be awesome I haven't seen the show so that's definitely on my like I'm gonna make a list of everything I need to watch probably start end of July beginning of August because there's a lot of Chucky movies I need to get through and shows and seasons it's a lot but um I did find out that since this is based on the game someone filmed their entire gameplay and uploaded it to YouTube as just like a full video so I'm going to watch the show, but I don't want to play an entire game. I don't have the the mental capacity to do that. <laughs> um, so if you wanted to watch what the house will actually be based on and we, we'll see more of, um, I can try and find the link to one and we can post it whenever we post this episode. Um, so there is that. But I have heard about um, how much representation and how awesome the show is and the game like I've seen a couple scenes um but I'm excited for I mean I can't really speak on it because I've never seen it but (laughs) 
Um, I'm excited. All my friends are big Last of Us fans. So I'm excited. Yeah. Um, again, I, I haven't played the game. I'm familiar with the game. I just haven't played it myself. Um, don't own the PlayStations that this game is on. They elude me so. Um, but yeah, the what I understand, the first game eludes um to to queerness the dlc is very open about it i think it won an awards for its representation and stuff that was called last of us left behind i think since it's a dlc it's part of the same story of that first game they could adapt it i hope they do um because it was a heartbreaking episode <laughs> the tv show <laughs> yeah so uh, i heard and i'm scared i mean there's so many episodes like that in the tv show bella like just prepare your heart <laughs> Get the tissues now. There are a lot of queer characters, and I hope um, that there's some representation for that. Um, another cool thing about The Last of Us House, we've talked about it before during a Rumors episode. Kelly, I don't know if you remember, was it 15 or 16? I think it was 15. I think it was 15. I'm pretty sure I posted about this the other day, but I will triple check while we are talking. Because it's long been rumored, and the reason we might have heard about it last year and it made its way onto a bunch of spec maps is because it's been two years in the making. Yeah, I saw that whole Twitter exchange, and I think it's absolutely fascinating how long that this has been dreamed of and wanted and talked about. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm sure Universal is not going to disappoint. I'm sure it's going to be amazing, but I'm just like, I'm so excited. Like, what have they cooked up? In their brains. Love, and by the way, it is, um, if you did want to listen to our spooky speculation episode um, from 2022, it was episode 15, um, HHN 2022 Spooky Speculation Season Starts is the name of the episode. Um, and we had Nicole on there and Bella and I were not permanent hosts yet, which is really, yeah. we're and just baby hosts. you'll get to hear me talk about Scream before I ever watched it. And now all of you know how obsessed I am. The That's biggest a fun little, it's so yeah, funny. yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I love also, um, you know, because uh, this it's kind of crazy that they're doing it based on the video game in a good way. Like, I think this is incredible, and I think it's a great step towards getting more game properties because I love video games, I love, I love, you know all kinds of different properties. And I think there's so many properties that they could use. Um, you know, I think it would have been the easy way to go like with the show route, just because it's really popular right now. Um, and of course there are going to be plenty of people that go that have only seen the show, um, partially myself included, although I've, I've done some research into the games and I would like to try to play it um, before Horror Nights. But I think it's cool because they've only done, I believe two houses at least in Orlando, I know they did um, a Silent Hill house, which I did, which was not well received. I had fun with it, but it was one of the first houses I ever did. And then um, there was a Resident Evil house as well, um, based on the video game. So I know like Five Nights at Freddy's has been rumored and people are interested in it. Um, I know that there's like a bunch of video game properties that um, would make really amazing houses up. Uh, people want to see Dead by Daylight as well. It hasn't been rumored yet, but it's one that people have been talking about. So I think it'd be really cool to, to have more video game houses. And I think it's cool that they're going that way. You literally took the words right out of my mouth. Um, I think seeing, I think anything like any media coming from a video game is just fascinating to me. Like I know there's talks of a Minecraft movie. Um, and I am a day one Minecraft player. So I think that'd be cool. But like going into Horror Nights, I think it would be so awesome to see Five Nights at Freddy's specifically with the movie coming out next year. That looks fantastic, by the way. I'm nev I've never played Five Nights at Freddy's. I've been way too scared to do it, but I've watched like clips of it, obviously. And like Freddy Fazbear, like from that one clip, I don't remember what episode it was, but when you're talking about Freddy, the, the horror movie guy, and I thought you were talking about Freddy Fazbear. But anyway, I digress. But I think it'd be really awesome to see that. And then I was going to say Dead by Daylight, too. I'm way too scared to play Dead by Daylight. And I know that would be absolutely scary. It's so fun. Let's but... all play it together. We could record it while we're playing it, like on here. And we can, we can maybe, like, oh God. it'd be so fun. I think it'd, it'd be, be cool because I know that you can, like, change, like, your avatar and, like, your, like, skin. 
and they have some scream people in there they have a bunch of horror people so what if they did a dead by daylight house but with all the different avatars this is just me trying to get Ghostface into it or whoever's from scream into the event but you know yeah, that's one cool thing about the game is that it's a lot of different um, properties that are used. I think there's Stranger Things characters as well. There wasn't back when I played it because I haven't played it in a while. But like Michael Myers um, and and Ghostface and everything. Um, also, Bella, if we play it, it's less scary, like significantly, if you're playing the killer. So if you're the killer, like and not one of the survivors, I don't remember the exact terminology. It's been a long time, but um but it, I don't think it would be very scary because, you know, there's not any of the... It's a cool game because, like, you hear, like, a heartbeat when, like, you know, someone is getting closer to you that's, like, the killer and you're trying to escape and stuff like that. Um, there's, like, footprints when you're running and stuff like that. So I feel like they could do a lot of really cool visual effects and um, audio effects with that that would make it feel more immersive. But it would also be, like, just a great excuse to, like, pull out some of those old costumes of, like, ones they've done from Horror Nights Past of properties that they've used. It would probably be kind of an IP nightmare, maybe, because they'd have to get a lot of different, um, like, IPs for, like, one house that, you know, I think it would be popular, though, especially if they um, market it in a certain way so that people know it's got all those characters in it. So even if they're not familiar with the game they still know that, okay, but I'm going to see all these iconic characters that I really like. I will literally pay for the ghost ri- the ghost rights face. The ghost face rights myself to get him into this event. I can't <laughs> take it anymore. I can't. Like, he, I can't. Someone needs to make a Scream video game so they do it. Like, I'm also, I'm just shocked that Scream has not become a house yet. Obviously, I know it's a rant issue, but with the popularity of the sixth one, why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> you guys are smirking at me. Why are you doing that? <laughs> what do you know? Don't be suspicious. No, it's not that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would just, I would, I say it all the time in every episode we talk about Horror Nights in, but I would do unspeakable things to get Ghostface. <laughs> at horror nights like i need it i will wait in that line every i will only do that house at the event the rest of the houses wouldn't exist to me i would move into the house i would do the vip tour every day i have an important question when it comes to the last of us and i think it's a burning question i don't know if we've thought we've thought it but i think we're all thinking it given past video game houses do you think we're getting a game pause room wait i've been thinking about that and like a uh, like the facade being like the loading screen i i have been thinking about that if there's the that house awesome. i think it's resi i think it's the resident evil that. house where everything in the house just stopped and it said game paused and nothing happened in that room because it was like you're playing the game and the game paused as you're walking through it <laughs> wait that's so cool it was very divisive. That's genius, and I love that. divisive because that's like a room. Oh, I oh, think I'm that's fascinating. I think I, that, wow. I don't know if they'll do it with Last of Us, because Last of Us is so serious with its story. Like, it's more of a movie or a TV and show, so... you know, the way it's it's structured and the way it feels than, like, Resident Evil is a cartoon <laughs> in comparison. Uh, Resident Evil is great. It's I goofy as think... heck. Um, but, no, nah, that was just a joke. I mean, Imagine I'm not the against facade it. Facade is like, like I said, like the loading screen. That yeah. would be cool. Because what else are they gonna do for the facade? I mean, the logo. I think a lot of options. Doing, like, um, the, um, the way they do, like, uh, like the weekend or Beetlejuice or Universal. Oh, with Mystery. the projection. Yeah, like they paint the the warehouse and then yeah. project the something on and have the music blaring. Yeah. Music's gonna be yeah. so good. Yeah. I don't know how it goes. I do know how it goes, but I just like can't do it. Yeah. Well, I'm excited. I think it's gonna be creepy, like super scary, which is exciting because like the Silent Hill house wasn't that scary. I didn't I didn't do the Resident Evil house, but like I think this one's gonna be like actually really scary. Yeah, I mean we didn't get a lot of clickers in the show, but 
they had a a pretty um big presence in the show to be kind of like nerve-wracking and there's some wild things that we saw and of course it's not based on the show this is based on the game but everything i've heard about the game is the clickers and all the different um not zombies but uh um the 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 fungus things (laughs) they are so scared of them yeah um and you know that probably maybe they'll incorporate the existential dread of the storyline i don't know how you do that but i also wouldn't have thought they'd been able to pull off something like bride or graveyard games uh in the past and they succeeded uh which is probably you know that's probably why we didn't get this last year one they probably want to hype up the show um but i'm sure they have not stopped thinking about how to do a last of us house since christmas 2021 which is when michael Ayala said it happened um it's also the second queer ip that we were getting that was announced this year because chucky obviously that's like very queer um it's camp that is the definition of camp i mean that you've got john not john is it john waters hold on who directed hairspray john waters (laughs) It was John Waters. Okay. Yeah. John Waters is literally in, in seat of Chucky. Um, like, yeah. So camp. I'm not a monster, Jake. <laughs> yeah. And the show is queer, but has heavy queer themes. And a lot of the, all the, every, if it's directed by Don Mancini. Yes. Um, so I don't know. I think that's cool that they're coming out. I don't, I don't know if they realized it when they were doing it. They're just like, what's the hot property? Chucky's their own last of us. We've been working on that for two years. Yeah, people will come in for those two things, and that's just how it worked out. But I think it's cool that that's their first step forward, more so than who's the universal legend that we're we're teasing, um, and and all of that. Like, well, what could that be? There's a lot of rumors going around and, and theories and and whatnot. But um, I, I think it's funny that their step their first step forward wasn't lore; it was, you know, uh, uh, Chucky and and Last of Us and representing queer horror. Because as we we're saying, you know artist queer horror has a heavy queer influence even all the way back to the 1930s and the bride of frankenstein and james whale god bless him um you know even in the 20s um it's there it's there and in the novels and and the books and the stories like you know this um yeah i think it's cool that the heritage of horror um is is queer and strong and and stuff and that's represented in (laughs) in a very small way um on both coasts for hgen 32 announcements um and probably better than all gonna be better than uh the crypt tv scare zone with a girl in the woods (laughs) i am still really upset at crypt tv and the direction they went with nfts and blocking people calling them out i didn't get blocked i wanted to i tried um because i really i loved that scare zone and it would have made really great houses um i wanted to see more of um walter the santa he was my favorite yeah you said crypt tv and it just got my mind going about crypt no TV. you're good you're good i probably shouldn't have put in that snide remark but i, I couldn't help myself so as we wrap up today's show, we'd like to do the creator spotlight and keeping in the theme of a pride and LGBTQ plus representation. Um, we've mentioned on the show before, um, but Orlando Park Stop, which again is Alicia Stella's thing. And we mentioned some of the things that they're doing. Um, their charity event to support the Trevor Project um, ends this week. Um, hopefully I get this episode out right away and and then you have more time to go check uh, stuff out. But um, they're doing memorabilia auctions. I think they're almost out because the event's almost over, but there's still a ton of art prints you can pick up. Um, they've got um, one called Trans Dimensional Joyride. So if you're a dinosaur fan, you might want to pick that up. They've got Beetlejuice's uh, Graveyard Review there. They did have a Poseidon one and and some other things. Um, but yeah, it's all theme, mostly a, a theme park related. And some of them are like with the, you know, a pride twist. Some are just fan art um and stuff but a bunch of local or not local but a bunch of um artists in the theme park community and a lot of queer artists have put stuff out there i made sure to grab a print uh i got the dinosaur one uh, it looks great can't wait to receive it and if you don't want art you don't have space for it or, or whatnot you can just donate directly um that's that is an option 
Uh, they do raffles if you donate. Um, but at the end of the day, what it's all for is to support the Trevor Project. Um, they've already raised tens of thousands of dollars for the treasure, uh, the, the 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 Trevor Project, um, which is while they broke their record like in a week, uh, what they raised last year. Um, they they got well beyond it um, very early on, and it's just like how much further can we go? Um, so you can look up more information about that at orlandoparkstop.com slash charity. It's called the Park Stop Stop Hate Fundraiser. Again, limited art prints, collectibles auctions, prize giveaways. Um, they have, I think the D&D event that they did is on replay. Uh, you can go back and watch that if you want to. Um, but yeah, again, at the end of the day, it's a support the Trevor Project. They raised $20,000 last year. And um, yeah, halfway through this month, they already reached it. So it's all all up from there. So go ahead and check that out. Play. So with all that out of the way, uh, Bella, where can they find you? Where can the people you, find you? You can find me on Instagram at Flynn Riders Knows. I'm about to hit 4K. So if you'd like to follow me, that'd be really nice. <laughs> um, and then my Twitter is at Bella Harvey with two Ys. And then I'm also over on the theme park workshop twitter you can find me there workshop tp yeah kelly where can the people find you hello you can find me on instagram i run the theme park workshop instagram feel free to message me on there anytime um, but you can also find me at kelly d hoffman for my personal account kelly with an ey um, all of our instagrams by the way are on the bio as well for the theme park workshop instagram if you just want to find us all in one place um, you can also find me on twitter at killer underscore kells with an s um, and I've been Adam. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at AdamJ underscore film. Because I guess I still talk about film. <laughs> um, and um, of course, on Instagram, um, Adam Johnson loves stories. Uh, again, don't forget to follow us on Patreon if that's something you're interested in. Uh, $5 tier, you can get bonus episodes and updates and a whole lot more. Um, so, yeah. I think that covers everything. So. I have something. Bella has something. We have Hold some on. breaking film news. Breaking news. The Little Mermaid live action has surpassed the global total of the 1989 original with inflation. Yeah. It just, Ooh, I believe it just crossed 500 million. I think that's what I saw. That is a huge Yeah, I wanted to mention it. I love that it so much because since it's Since we fantastic. had that episode about it. Yeah. yeah. I'm wearing my Ariel Spirit that's jersey amazing. today. Period, Little Mermaid. Everyone go see it. And if you've already seen it, go see it again. Adam, uh, you need to go see it. I do. I do. Also, go and see Elemental. Elemental. Oh, Everyone go see good. Elemental. It was so, 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 so good. So, yeah. so Start good. getting want, your points together the, for Barbie. I, I want the Lava Jaffa. That's all I want at Disney is the Lava Jaffa. <laughs> I would love that. Also, go see yes. Spireverse if you haven't seen it. It's Spireverse. really, really good. Get your good. pinks. Get your sparkles ready for Barbie. I was going to say, get, get your yeah, Barbie get tickets. Your Barbie tickets. Get your Oppenheimer tickets. Get your Barbie Barbenheimer tickets. Barbenheimer double feature. Barbenheimer double feature. <laughs> it's going to be a great July Get, get your Peacock subscription. Start watching Chucky. <laughs> the show. Yes. There's a lot to catch up. Please do. It's the best. If you guys like Chucky, feel free to message me on my personal Instagram or the Theme Park Workshop Instagram about Chucky, and I will talk Not to me you though. about it I all hate day. Chucky. We well, you haven't watched it yet. Wait till you get to Cult of Chucky where there's multiple Chucky's. It's the best. I one. just hate scary dolls, Adam. And the TV show. <laughs> ah, he's no. not that scary. He's more it's of a, a, it's a little more of a jerk. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love Ed Sheeran. The Banshees of Ed Sheeran. That's <laughs> true. That's our show, folks. Hopefully this isn't the last of us. Us. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm <laughs> saying bye. <laughs>